Welcome back to LabVIEW Basics. I'm Sam Kristoff from LabVIEW Maker Hub, and in this section we're going to talk about data types. So let's jump into LabVIEW and start learning about data types. I'm going to create a new VI by pressing Control N, and then tile it up and down by pressing Control T. So the first data type we'll look at is a Boolean. A Boolean stores the value of true or false. I'll right click on the front panel to bring up the controls palette and pin it in place. And then under the silver palette, I'll pick Boolean and choose a push button. The push button is represented with a green control on the block diagram. So green indicates that it's a Boolean. Now you can imagine when we press a button, it could either be pressed or not pressed. So true or false, which is why we use a Boolean to store that value. So I'll go ahead and delete the Boolean and I'm gonna jump back up to the silver palette and let's take a look at numerics. So if I grab a numeric control and place it on the front panel, you'll see that it's created with an orange control on the block diagram. So numerics store number values and there's different types of number values that controls can store. By default, the orange value is a double. You can see it says DBL. A double has a whole number component and a decimal component and also a sign so it can be positive or negative. And this is the default type for numeric controls and indicators. If I right click on the control, I can choose representation and you can see all the different representations that a numeric can take. So if I switch to I32, for example, now we're using an integer that's 32 bits wide. So an integer means that it's a whole number, there's no longer a decimal part, and it can still be positive or negative. The 32 represents the 32 bits that we're using to store the number. And this determines the maximum and minimum value that we can store in this data type. So I'll right click again and choose representation. And now you see U32. So U32 is also blue to indicate that it's an integer. So again, there's no decimal part. The U indicates that it's unsigned. So there's no longer a positive and negative. These are all positive numbers. The 32 still means that we're using 32 bits to represent this number. So I can right click again and we'll look at representation. And you can see there's all kinds of different types in here. Complex, singles, complex, doubles, 64-bit numbers, floating point, fixed point. Mainly you'll be using doubles and I32s, but it's good to know that all these types exist. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the numeric. And I'm going to jump back up to the silver palette. And we'll look at arrays. So you can think of arrays as a container that stores many of the same data type. So I'll place an array by clicking on it and left clicking on the block diagram or the front panel. And you can see that by default our array is empty. So we need to place a data type in it. So I'll jump back up to silver and I'm just gonna put a numeric control in there. And when I grab the numeric control, you can see as I hover over the array, it gets highlighted. And that means I'm gonna place this inside the array um, element on the front panel. So now we have an array. On the block diagram, you can see that the array is the same color as the data type we use, but there's kind of brackets around the sides here. That indicates that it's an array. We can also see if we right click on this terminal and choose create indicator, we can see that the array wire is double thick. So that indicates that this is an array of numerics, not just a single numeric. If I hover over the array front panel, I can click and drag to expand it. So I can see the different elements in this array. And they're all sort of grayed out right now because none of those elements actually exist. So if I double click in here and type one, two, three, now you can see those are kind of highlighted and come to life. That's because I've added elements to this array. These grayed out elements below it still don't exist. And I can use this index to cycle through the different elements in the array. If I right click on the array, I can say add dimension and I can go from a two dimensional or a one dimensional array to a two dimensional array, which you can think of as a table. And you'll see that my wire broke when I did that because now I'm wiring a two dimensional array to a one dimensional. If I right click and add a dimension to my indicator, you can see that my wire is fixed now and that it's even thicker to indicate that this is a two dimensional array. So I'm going to delete my arrays and we'll jump back up to the silver palette and let's look at strings. I'll place a string control and you'll see that a pink control is created that says ABC. So this indicates that it's a string control. You can think of strings as storing text. So I can type in here, hello world. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the string control and we'll jump back up to the silvers palette 
And under the array matrix sub palette, I'm gonna place a cluster. So I'll left click to select it and left click to place it. So this looks like just an empty box right now and that's kind of what it is. You can think of clusters sort of like arrays, but a cluster can contain different data types. So if I jump back up to the silver palette, I can put a numeric in my cluster and I can also put a Boolean in the same cluster. So I can store different data types in a cluster. And if you're familiar with other programming language, this is kind of like a struct or a collection. If we look at the block diagram, you'll see that the cluster is represented with a bright pink control. I'm gonna delete that cluster. And there's one more data type that we wanna look at, and that's the error. So I'm gonna place this error in, and an error is just a cluster, but it's a special type of cluster that's made up of a status, which is a Boolean, which indicates if there is an error or not, a code, which is a numeric, and then a source, which is a string. And that tells us more information about the error. And you'll see that the error cluster is kind of a gold color and is represented with kind of a thicker wire. So in the next section, we're going to talk about data flow. So we're actually gonna start executing some code and seeing how we can create applications in LabVIEW. Make sure to check out labviewmakerhub.com for more tutorials and projects and ask any questions you have on the MakerHub forums at labviewmakerhub.com forums.